Our God is exalted. Jesus is reigning as king, high above the heavens, high above the earth, above every principality, every power, every government, every dominion, every situation, every need. He is our king and he is our God. And we exalt him and glorify his mighty and matchless name. Exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted and I will praise His name. He is the Lord forever. His truth shall reign. Heaven and earth rejoice in Him.
some joy Every fear suddenly wiped away Here in your presence All of my gains now fade away
Good evening. Uh, this is Elder Jeffrey coming to you today, and I, I pray that all is well. I pray that uh, God is blessing, even though there's things going on. I pray that you're strengthened, even though there's circumstances and situations. I pray that you're seeking God's face in this hour and in this time. You know, the heart is a funny, funny thing. It has all its emotions and all its complexities and all the thing that goes on in the heart that man knows not of. But God do. And today, that's what we're going to talk about today. That's what I believe God put in my spirit for you to know today. That there are things that goes on in the heart that only God can cure. Amen? There's a lady named Kate Cooper, professor of ancient history and author of the Journal of Early Christian Studies, says, the heart is the locus of physical and spiritual being and represents the central wisdom of feeling as opposed to the head wisdom of reason. It is compassion and understanding, life-giving and complex. It's, it is a symbol of love. Did you know that according to the Strong Concordance, the word heart occurs some 730 times in the Old Testament, 105 times in the New Testament. The word hearts occur 112 times in both Testaments combined. And the word hearted is used eight times. Total occurrences of the three forms of the word are found some five, 955 times or more throughout the Bible. Now, I don't know about you, but when God talks about a specific subject, a, a specific thing in detail like that, there's something that he wants us to know. My God. And we're going to see this today. I'm going to read from you. For you, actually, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Proverbs 4, 23, which I will read from the King James Version for a specific reason, and Jeremiah 17, 9, and 10. Glory to God. Let me, let's pray before. Father, I thank you for your goodness and grace, and thank you for your mercy, and I thank you for your word, and I thank you for you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You, Father, fulfilling your purpose and your plan, oh God, and up on the planet, even in this pandemic, my Lord, Father, you are working out that which you have already intentioned by your own authority, my Lord, in the name of, even if we don't understand it, oh God, in the name of Jesus. You are working that out, Father, working issues in the, in the hearts of man, working it out, Father, by your glory, for your purpose, and for your plan. Father, I thank you, Lord. Anoint your servant, O God, for thy word is already anointed. And I pray that it falls on good ground today, Lord, and blesses someone today, free someone today. Bring understanding and revelation to someone today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your way, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Glory to God. Proverbs 4.23, the King James Version. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. In other words, guard your heart, for out of it comes the issues of life. Glory to God. Jeremiah 17. Father, I thank you. 17, 9, and 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. 
Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. My God, my God, in the name of Jesus. Now, this paragraph that I just read was spoken by the Lord God in the time of Jeremiah. When corruption and decay had marked every phase of domestic and public life in his era. It was at this time when he was approximately 17 years old when God called him to be the mouthpiece to speak against the atrocities of his day. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Are there people that's rising up right now that God has risen to speak against all the atrocities that's happening now? Now, there was a political figure in the time of Jeremiah. Like now, we have political figures all over the place. A godly king named Josiah. The scripture said he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and followed completely the ways of his father, David. Not turning to a side, a side to the left or to the right. You find that in 2 Kings 22, 1 and 2. And he did this. This was his best. To stop the tide of wickedness. But it was in vain. My God. See, we have people that's passing laws, and that's good. We have people that's passing policies, and that's good. Ah, but let me tell you, they're just scratching the surface. For Josiah's attempt to bring reform could not do, could not do any more than touch the surface of things. Oh, Lord God. In order to bring reform, you must be transformed and conformed to his ways. Well, I'm going to say that again. In order to bring reform, you must transform and conform to his ways. My God. For you see, the sin and rebellion was already written, engraved, inscribed, etched on the tablet of the people's hearts. In other words, the transgression of mankind was and still is deep-rooted in their very being. That's the heart. You know, most may not know that today we have printers and, and, and computers and laptops that, that type things for us. But back in the ancient days, the things was etched out on tablets. And they were etched out on stone. By the way, the Ten Commandments, was, the, the second set, was etched out on stone, but it was etched out by chisel. That was no easy task. And, and when they etched out and when it was chiseled like that, it, you know, it dug deep. That's what God is saying about the sin of mankind. It's etched out in the hearts of man. And, and if this is going to work, somewhere they got to do surgical. Have a, they got to be a surgical implant, and it has to be deep-rooted. We, we have to get to the root of the issue. For the wickedness of mankind, incur, incurable heart can only be healed by trust in God. Psalm 17, 3, 5, and 10. For God had declared to Jeremiah, Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh. And whose heart turns away from the Lord. The, I love the message Bible. It says this. It states it like this. Cursed is the strong one who depends on mere humans who thinks he can make it on muscle, that's physical that is, alone and sets God aside as dead weight. Oh God. There's people that just refuse to allow God to do what he needs to do to get things right. See, because we think we can do it on our own, but we're failing miserably. 
the word curse in this context means devoted to destruction. No matter what you do without God, it may seem like it's good in the beginning, but in the end, it's vanity. For Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. The Message Bible says this, Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to, fi don't try to figure out everything on your own. Oh, Lord, let somebody say amen. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go, he's the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all. Oh, we live in a time and in a place where, where there's just, there is degrees on all that cover some people's wall. Uh, but yet the world is still, is a, is, 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 there's still a downhill spiral. And you see, only God uh, can make things straight. We have to understand that. My God. Moreover, the Living Bible says this. If you want favor with God and man and a reputation for good judgment and common sense, then trust the Lord completely. Don't ever trust yourself. Jesus. Whoa! Don't ever trust yourself. I, I don't care how good you sound. Don't trust yourself. I don't trust myself. I trust the God that's in me to lead me every day. See, because the, the man you see before you could be happy today and, and, and he could be a totally different person tomorrow without God. In everything you do, it goes on to say, put God first. And he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. Not success as man defines success. Oh, Lord. See, see, we define success in big bank accounts. We define success in, in, in Rolls Royces and, and beautiful cars. And nothing wrong with those things. Ah, but that's not success in itself. Success is leaning on God to make your path straight, and he's glorified. That's success. In Matthew 3, in Matthew 13, 1 and 3, 1 and 3 and 10, the scriptures say, I'm going to paraphrase for you, that Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. And large crowds gathered around him so much so that he got into a boat and sat in it. While all the people stood on shore, oh, Jesus was very popular, and he's popular today for the people of God, that is. Then he told them many things in parables. And then the disciples came to him and asked. We're always asking questions. <laughs> Jesus, so inquisitive. And, but you know what I love about the Lord? He so patiently asks our questions. Even if we think it, it, it sounds kind of off kilter. He, in his loving kindness, he just answers our questions. The disciples said, why do you speak to the people in parables? The scripture states that Jesus' reply, his reply in verse 11 was this. Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. <laughs> All church understand what God has given us today. We got the answer. Oh, we have the answer to life's issues today. Uh, but you see, they don't. It behooves us to sit back and not proclaim the gospel, for that is the answer. Glory to the living God. Oh, Father, I thank you. Whoever has, he says, will be given more, and they will have in abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And let me tell you something. He's not talking about material possessions here. I'm going to show you. Then in verse 15, Jesus says, For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their ears, hear with their eyes, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. In other words, Jesus was simply explaining to the disciples that revelation and truth of the kingdom of heaven is given to the believing disciples, but not to the unbelieving crowd. Oh, it's not that God don't want to give it to them. Oh, they just refuse to believe. 
Oh, we could have had an answer a long time for the coronavirus. It's there. And, and our God will release the answer in due season. Ah, but we still got too many unbelieving people that think they can do it themselves. Glory to the living God. Speak, Holy Spirit. My God. For Hebrews 11.6 says this. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. Oh, you got to know that he's there even though you don't see him. There's great evidence that God exists. You just got to open your eyes and let the Holy Spirit show you. And a reward of those who earnestly seek him. Jesus is simply stating that to those whose heart are open to his teachings, God will give more understanding and abundance of knowledge. That's revelation. Oh, Father, those that seek his heart, those that seek his will, God will get in revelation to the, to the secrets of the world, the issues of life. Or he will plant into their hearts what's man's error and give them the solution and how to fix it by his power and his strength. My God. Furthermore, he goes on to say that, and those that revelation and truth of the kingdom of God has been given because they believe, even more will be given. Even more will be given. I heard a wise person say, you got to consecrate yourself. <laughs> I heard a wise person say, you got to commit yourself. I heard a wise person say, oh, you got to separate yourself. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, help us, Lord. And greater revelation will be given unto you. Because you believe. But those that do not will be still be groping in the dark. Trying to find out what the answer is to the secrets of life. Or the success of life. But in contrast to those who put their faith in external things. Even that that have been given. Jesus says will be taken away from them. Or even the things, the material things that you put your faith in. That will soon disappear. Or the things that you worship that's not God I will, will slip right through your hands. Glory to God. And because they refuse to hear and see the heart, and see the heart becomes hardened. Every time you refuse to uh, heed to the word of God, every time you refuse to believe that he's there, further and further away you go. Now, that's not God's doing. Listen, we have choice. That is not God's. It's God's desire for you to draw on to him. See, but you have a choice to draw on to him or just step back. See, he loves us so much, he'll let you make the choice. For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son, the Bible says. For whosoever believe in him shall have everlasting life. The, the Bible says Jesus did not come to condemn the world, but to save it through him. But the choice is always yours to believe that or not. Mm. My God. And because they refused to hear and see, their hearts became hardened. And in other words, because there are those who refuse the word of God, they never will be able to understand his teachings no matter how many degrees you have in the secular, uh, in the secular community. And never receiving re the revelation thereof. For revelation, catch this now, for revelation is caught, it's not taught. Oh, I didn't think you heard me in social media. Revelation is caught, it's not taught. And you got to catch it at the right time when God gives it. Oh, Lord, I can't tell you the many times I'm at my desk and I'm at prayer and, the, and I get these nuggets of, of, of topics to come down to minister and I got to catch it right away. I got to write it down because if I don't, I won't remember. It's caught. It's not taught. Therefore, never receiving, he says, wow, the healing their hearts so desperately needs. Wow. For every time you push him away, the healing that he knows you need in your heart, it can't be healed. And remember, Proverbs says the issues of life comes out of the heart. And if 
your heart is never healed, racism will always exist. Backbiting will always exist. All the other atrocities that goes on in and out of the church will always exist. Oh, he's the healer, I tell you. And the scripture says Jesus is the great physician. There, there's no greater doctor than him. I know doctors act like they, they, they got the miracle cure. But let me tell you something. It's the power of God that heals internally. My God. Coming down the wire, folks. The, in the paragraph of Matthew 9, chapter 9, 9 and 12, we see the calling of Matthew, a tax collector, by Jesus to follow him. His, his dinner, uh, he had dinner at Matthew's house where the scriptures say, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. Now, nobody ever in those days, you don't go to, a that's like going to the house of the IRS. <laughs> that the person works for the IRS, oh my God, what are you doing? Ah, but Jesus says, I'm going to eat at your house, Matthew. See, although no one else loves you, I understand your heart. And, or you're not a bad person, you just need a heart transplant. And I'm the doctor who can give it to you. Oh, glory to God. Now, these actions prompt Jesus to be questioned. <laughs> I laughed when I read this. God showed me this. Questioned by the religious rulers of that time. Oh, Lord God, help us. Of that day. Why does your teacher, they ask, eat with tax collectors and sinners? Sinners in this context means to miss the mark. They fail to realize they missed the mark too. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but they bring the accusation. See, but their hearts are bad too. And they are needing a great physician. But don't, it's bad when you need a doctor and you don't know it. Oh, God, help me. Jesus' reply was this. I love my Lord. It is not the healthy. <laughs> who need a doctor but the sick. In other words, Jesus was saying, I'm not here for those that are physically strong who think they can do it within themselves. I'm not here for those that seem to have the answer to everything. But those that are in physical and spiritual need, those I am here for, those that see that they're destitute, those that see that their heart is bad, those that see that they need of a change, I'm here for them. Now, I could be here for you too, Jesus says, but again, the choice is yours. My God. For God told the people in the time of Ezekiel, the prophet, 3626, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit, because that spirit you have now is not of me. Oh, God, I will remove from your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I know you've been hurt and been traumatized. I know that things have happened in your family. So, you know, and it made your heart hard. But Jesus says, I am here to tenderize that. I am going to give you the love and the compassion that you need. Or I'm going to tenderize your heart that you will know that I love you. And then you can love others no matter what color they are. Last but not least, in Psalm 51.10, this is the ESV's uh, uh, translation. After God confronted King David concerning the error of his ways, he said this. David said this. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. David was confronted with his own heart. Even though the Bible says that David like, did these great things for God, but he had a bad heart also. And God understood that. And when God confronted him with it, he was smart enough to say, Oh, Lord, create in me a clean heart. I don't want this heart that's, that, that discriminates. I don't want this heart that don't love. I don't want this heart that don't care. Create a new spirit within me, Lord. Give me your heart. Give me your spirit. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus, that's why you said, that's why you came. Church and those that are unchurched, the problem is there. Racism is real. Discrimination is real, but it's the issue of the heart. It's not the issue of the head. 
It's the issue of the heart. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus came to rectify, to resolve, oh, Father, in the name, to resolve that issue that we shall be one, not just the church, but the church and the world, that we shall be one by the transformation and the renewing of mankind's heart. Sounds simple. It is simple. If we, the word said, if we submit. So I leave you with this. If you're at home today and you're still wondering why is it that all these atrocities are still going on, well, now you know. The issue is the heart. And if we get before God and lift his name up before the world and let them know you're not a bad person, no matter what color you are. The issue is, you just need a trans, uh, trans, uh, uh, transplant, if you will, of the heart. And Dr. Jesus is the only one that can do that. Amen. God bless you. I love you. And I look forward to seeing you when all this is over. Amen. Glory to God. Well, did you enjoy the video today? I pray that you did. And I thank you for staying tuned in. Now, there will be other upcoming videos. So be sure to like, share, or follow our Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram page. And it's entitled Love Gospel Assembly. Now, don't forget to click that little bell so that you will be notified of all the other upcoming videos. In the meantime, have a blessed day.